Bonnet family, what's going on? ML Sports Take brought to you by Camillus Golf Club and Welch and Company Jewelers. Bonaventure wins 75 to 73 over LaSalle. I'm going to start at the end and kind of work backwards. No particular order. Number one, I thought this was a great game. Uh, number two, you got to love trying to read to your kid with two minutes to go. And I'm like bouncing back and forth between an Easter book and trying to, you know, pay attention to the game. Um, Bonaventure, honestly, th this this was so Bonnie's to have to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with LaSalle. It isn't even funny, right? Um, but at the end of the game, I mean, a comedy of errors, a comedy of errors by the Bonnies. I, I, I have no idea what kind of execution is going on uh, uh, or, or attempted execution is going on. Um, I mean, you have to execute better down the stretch. Luckily, they weren't. I mean, they're not going to get away with this stuff against Loyola. I mean, come on. The, the, the stuff that went on at the end of this game. The Dayton's, the Loyola's, I mean, they, they kill you. I mean, they, they would have beaten the Bonnies by at least 15 um, with, with the way this game was going on, right? What in the world, I mean, honestly, is is Asemvis doing leaving his feet on a three-pointer? Like, w w what is that? You know, when you go to basketball camp as a 10-year-old, you're taught basics of basketball, right? Like beef, balance, eyes, elbow, follow through. You're taught to dribble with your head up. You're taught to not leave your feet. You're taught to keep the man, you know, between you and the basket. You're, you're, you're taught those things. And he just leaps right into them. Um, the failed tips, the failed layups and easy chippies. I, I, I have no idea. The venting turnover. Um, uh, you know, the, the venting missed free throw off the back iron and he just takes off and it's a lane violation. I, I just... Oh my gosh. Now, having said that, there were some plays that were real. I mean, dudes had stones. I mean, Daryl Banks' layup going to the tin, the reverse of the hand, tremendous. 151 left to play. Moses Flowers made three-pointer. Tremendous. Um, you know, Bonaventure, they were up eight in, in, at halftime. I thought in the first half, offensive execution was great. Defensive execution was not uh, St. Bonnie, uh, you know, allowed LaSalle open threes all over the place. I mean, I, I mean, are they going to close out on a three-point shot before the end of the year? Um, I know that they have on some. It's just I'm being sarcastic here. I mean, gosh, can you get out on people? You know, the big guys nailing shots. There was a great play in the first half. I think with about maybe six to eight minutes left, somewhere in that range. And I think Flowers had the ball on the right side. He kind of waited and baited the defender. He passed it to Banks to the left, and Banks stopped popped wide open and nailed the three and you're like wow what does bonnie defense do coming back they leave a wide open three for lasalle i mean you just i don't understand why they can't get out on shooters and i thought this game was going to be in the 80s by the way after the first half turns out it's in the 70s i like it better that way because i feel like if bonna is going to get into a shootout more times than not they're going to lose because they don't guard the three enough right they allowed lasalle 7 to 16 there Luckily for the Bonnies in the first half, and in the second half to a degree until LaSalle really started to adjust, and a lot of weak side defense, a lot of weak side rebounding, LaSalle started taking over the game inside and from a rebounding perspective. Bonaventure had a lot of O rebounds in the, in the first half, a lot of D rebounds, important ones in the second. You know, they out-rebounded LaSalle 34-30. But what, one thing that really bothered me in the second half was like venting the inside play of Venning and Brown was huge in the first half, but then LaSalle adjusted. They moved the chess piece. Mark Schmidt, his team did not move a chess piece back. They kept dumping into Venning, dumping into Venning, dumping. And I'm like, dude, it ain't working enough already. Stop going inside because they have adjusted to this. Take him out of the game. Go with a quicker lineup. Go with four, three, four guards if you have to and a couple of forwards and just let it go. Let it go. Stop going inside. Now, Venning did late have a redonkulous spin move where he took the ball in and kind of just whipped around and literally looked as quick as Dominique Wilkins in there and, and scored the basket. That was a unbelievable shot, unbelievable execution type play. So for as many com uh, comical errors they had down the stretch, they did have a couple big ones. The Moses Flowers 3 was great. I mean, you could even hear it from the broadcasters like it was a no, yes, you know, one of those and, you know, it was a really risky, um, really risky shot. But I got to tell you, I've loved that about Flowers. I said it last year when he was on the bench. I wanted him to start. He started tonight, by the way. Um, 
I, I love this guy. Uh, he has stones no matter what the situation is. He's not afraid to shoot. He's not afraid to go up and get a rebound against a big guy. He's not afraid to defend in the final seconds. He ain't afraid of anything. This dude has stones, and I love that. And I wish that a couple players on this team, not to name any, had the same stones that he has. Um, I will say that Banks, you know, gave him double figures tonight. He was big. He made a big, bunch of big shots. I mean... You know, he made two big threes. He had that big layup late. Um, you know, Brown had the 11 a, a lot in the first half, of course. I thought Asemvis' rebounds in the first half were unbelievable. He's always good for that one huge three. <laughs> you know, you don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. Um, Venning had the 12. He was more first half than second half. He, he didn't do anything on the boards. I was super uh, disappointed with his rebounding. He just got pushed around the entire night. Uh, Pride. Six rebounds. How good is this dude on the glass? I mean, I watched this guy rebound at CBA in Liverpool. He's a great, not a good, he's a great, he's an elite rebounder. And I'm not even going to say for a guard because we are in a positionless basketball world. He, he's, he's, <laughs> we're in a position, positionless basketball world where anybody can do anything at any time on the floor. He gets boards. I mean, he gets huge boards. He had six more tonight. Enormous rebounding, enormous rebounding. Um, you know, you had six bodies and double figures. I thought that was a huge reason to, you know, why they won. I mean, it, it seemed as though they were able to kind of level out a lot of guys. Uh, the former Jan was, was one who didn't have double figures. Barry Evans put up a donut like usual. Um, but overall, um, huge plays to counter the comical, uh, the, you know, the, the, the comedy of errors down the stretch. Huge plays to counter them. So they kind of balanced out. Uh, Bonaventure got 24 free throws. They made 19 of them. Um, you know, 15 threes taken, they made the six. Big mark there for the Bonnies. They didn't shoot it from the floor all that well because the second half they kind of dipped. 43.1, shot selection and all the rest kind of changed. LaSalle adjusted again. A lot of that had to do with dumping, dumping, dumping. Shot clock's winding down. They're all out of sorts. And then a bad shot. Can't have that. You can't have that. Bonaventure has been doing that stuff all year long. It's time to stop. It's the A-10 tournament. You have an opportunity to run it out here and make the NCAAs. Every game is your last game. Enough. Please adjust. I mean, honest to God, stop going to something that isn't working. It is so freaking frustrating to watch an offense. What is the definition of insanity? Right? I mean, come on. Like, enough already. They keep going to the well when something's not working. I'm done with it. Um... You know, I would like to see a little bit, maybe if Venning is off and not rebounding right away against Loyola, I would like to see him pulled. And I would like to see, I mean, you know, and maybe Brown is in there performing, but I'm telling you right now, I kind of like the idea of getting the offense going and building it around, you know, Jan on the outside, having the guards kind of go in and out all the time, moving them around constantly, Pride, Flowers, Adams, Woods, Banks, and Jan, go a little smaller and then put the bigs back in and kind of, you know, try to counter some things and all the rest. I don't think the Bonnies are going to beat Loyola, um, but you never know. They play up to their competition, so that's still there. But overall, I thought that was really why the Bonnies won this basketball game. It should also be noted that the Bonnies had six steals in this game. They had five blocks in this game. I was really, really impressed with the hands in the right place, tipping balls, getting the balls uh, you know, stolen and batted to teammates, getting on the floor, hustling two guys on one, outmatching people, especially that last to eight to 12 minutes, I thought was a huge chunk where Bonaventure was getting steals, getting blocks, playing team defense in right spots. They were not chasing. They were not behind the play. They did leave a couple of three-pointers open and all the rest, but for the most part, Bonaventure was able to get enough of the defensive presence with the hands on the ball, especially in two-point range. And then at the end of the game, they held, you know, they held down, they held the fourth down and uh, created a bad shot. And then LaSalle, I mean, they, they were right there. They were right there on that three for the putback and, and just couldn't, just couldn't get it. So um, that's just kind of how it goes. You're frantic at the end of games, but Bonnie did enough to get this thing done. And now you breathe. And now you see if you can win another one. Welcome to March. ML Sports, Tate Camillus Golf Club, and Welch and Company Jewelers bringing it to you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as I always tell you, enjoy the games.